What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and oh fuck, is that machine again? What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today, um, I've been getting some comments uh, um, about my machine workflow and how I use it with Studio One. And I'm just gonna go over quickly how I use it to maximize efficiency and creativity like I am known to do. So, I have a track that I've already created inside machine. Um, uh, and and it's typically it's typically what I do is I'll make an intro a hook and maybe a couple of the verse pieces or something um different um different patterns this one was pretty simple I made three patterns So obviously it's not a song yet. I like to do um, most of the time. I like to do the majority of my range in, in um, um, Studio One because I just think it's I think it's faster. I think I'm faster in it. I don't know if it would be faster for you, but that's how I like to work. So the way that I get out of Machine into Studio One is first of all I don't like using this as a plugin inside of a DAW. I can't for the life of me have anybody who actually uses machine um I, I don't know about other um other drum machines um but i can't find anybody who uses machine to tell me what the actual benefit of using this inside studio one especially with the way that it handles um you know high cpu loads and things like that i don't know why you would put a DAW inside of a DAW. it doesn't make sense you know i could see like rewiring fruity loops if you wanted to use their step sequencer and then bounce that into there um but yeah i'm not i'm not going to take the time to set up all 32 outs um and and then your groups change and every time you know it just it takes away it takes away the flow so um i choose to use standalone and the way that and this is easy shit the way that you um the way that you get out of it is you just go to file export audio and you want to select options so you want to go to export and you want to select all and you want to go to sound outputs and basically what this is going to do is this is going to all of your um all all of your different um things that you've went ahead and programmed inside machine is going to go ahead and bounce them out the way that you have arranged your patterns up here so that is great um you'll notice that group d1 i don't have checked in because d1 is a it's a vocal sample where i have um if you look at it i've chopped up the the different pieces um So the, those are spread across 16 pads, but I don't want three tracks of uh, of this chop, that chop, and the other chop. What I want is one track with just the chops because these aren't played on top of each other. They're played, you know, in, in different uh, one-shot sections. So in order to avoid that mess, um, what I do is I go back to um, back to export audio and I export those individual sounds like that. Then I go to group outputs and then I'll just export group D1. And then what's that gonna do for me is you wanna make sure you put it in a folder that you could easily find. Um, I just recently got uh, another two terabyte hard drive. So I made um, a folder called machine projects. I made a folder called machine stems. Boom, I got Jesse Spano right here. And then these are going to be my files. So then once I'm done with that and the export process, it's so fucking fast. It's amazing. Like the export process, as much as the time as I've took talking about it, I could have exported that track three times. So then I go to studio one. I already have a folder, um, a menu um, stem saved 
that shoots me right over to my folder, okay? And I just click and drag onto the arrange window. Actually, let me back up for a second so you guys can see this. I've already created a template, and if you guys have seen my template tutorial, this should all look very familiar. All I did was I took all of my VSTs from my original template, deleted all the tracks, deleted all the VSTs, kept all the routing. So I still have my filter bypass, band drums, filter. I still have my mastering chain. I still have my reverbs and my delays. Those are all set in place. So then all I gotta do is click and drag these onto the arrange window. Okay. Then click and drag this onto the arrange window. All right boom and now i'm in studio one now the other the only other thing you want to make sure is you want to double check with your bpm on this track it's 143 so you'll go ahead and you'll set this to 143 if you want to be extra diligent highlight them right click go to file tempo set them to 143 now if you want to speed up and slow down the track it'll be elastic to the grid so that's awesome um and then when you play your song the only thing really left to do is the routing and everything so i can see um, this is the beginning of my instruments so i just go here click on this these are red These are blue. If you've seen the tu if you've seen the template tutorial, this should also look very familiar to you. So red goes to drums. This goes to band. Now I've got the the entire project routed into um, into um, into my mixing filters, into you know into my into my buses, and I'm ready to start arranging. So, you know, I already know that. Um, how this beat is pretty much laid out. I know that the intro is 16 bars because I remember from uh, from from just recently programming it. I know that the chorus is is another 16, and then I know that I have this little eight bar feature right here. I'll delete that, and you know you could take it you could take it a step further, you know, and um, bring the arranger into it. And here you got your intro. Swing this guy out here. Oops. Don't want to do that. Nope. All right. Boom. So now I got this. You just rename them. Call that V1. Call this hook. You know, this is the intro.
and then off of that i've pretty much arranged the entire track you know all i have to do now is just highlight all these guys right here send them over here and that is that is a beat you know just go ahead and um you know add 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 whatever mixing treatments i'm, I'm gonna pursue and then that's it and so this is pretty much how i work um now when i whenever i choose to use machine you know the thing i like about machine is um again for someone like me who started making beats on something like an MPC and a Roland JV 1080 sound module, and you're used to looking at th that's why uh, that's why I got rid of my machine studio too. I had I had the machine studio, but it was just it was too new. It, it took away from it. I got the MK1. You know, it's got the old um, just a uh, dual chromatic um, screen, and you just dive through the menus to to find the sounds, and you do a lot more listening. Um, then you do looking at the screen and for me there's some type of um, there's some type of real magic in that workflow so that's that's what I really enjoy about that um, I like getting into that it's a nice break from what I do inside studio one so yeah that is a, a personal look into my workflow as far as machine I think if you have both products um, to get the best out of them use studio one to arrange, use it to mix, use it to um, to add finishing touches, um, use it use it to time stretch. I, I keep this open while I'm using um, Studio or while I'm using Machine because their time stretch is um, it's a little constraining. You could do a lot more with Studio Ones. Really easy to just drag and drop something into a file and then um, refresh your browser inside machine. It works really well. So this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions, Studio1Tutorials.com. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.